All right. Well, good evening, everyone. 6.30, so we'll, we'll get started. I just want to welcome everybody uh, to this listening session. Thank you for coming on such a beautiful evening here in Virginia Beach. This is the third of 12 scheduled sessions. And with us tonight is your city councilman, Rocky Holcomb. Okay. <laughs> I'm Charnell Hearing, and with me is my colleague, Jane Dittmar. We are with the Weldon Cooper Center, and we are the team that will be helping the city on, with the facilitation tonight. It's just some housekeeping items. Uh, if there is an emergency, there are exits all around us. I feel like a flight steward over here, there, and of course out front. The restrooms are to your right down the hall across the street from the water fountains. And if you have cell phones with you, if you could just silence them or put them on, on buzz uh, so that you know you won't disturb anyone who's speaking and if you need to take a call please feel free to step out and take the call I'll turn it over to Jane thanks Charnel um, we uh, we wanted to just go over uh, our roles what a facilitator is going to do tonight and what you are hopefully going to do our job is to make sure you are heard and that everything that you say tonight is captured uh, your role is to listen respectfully as people comment. Not all of you may be commenting tonight, which is fine. Uh, but uh, when you do, your, uh, your role is also to stay within a three-minute time limit. We're going to first hear from folks here, but we also have a lot of people joining us through live stream. The purpose of the meeting um, is... Uh, it is is sent to us through City Council. Our, your City Councilmen and women want to know about your experience with the election system. Anything uh, having to do with that topic is what we want to hear about. We've had some fascinating comments the first two sessions that we had. I'm sure we're going to hear some more uh, today. But uh, what they're really eager for is any input you have. Um, we're going to capture your comment in the following way. First, we'll hear from you in this room. Uh, we'll hear then from people on live stream. After they're finished, if we still have any time left in the 90 minutes and somebody else thinks, I wish I had signed up to speak, we may be able to fit you in. There will be transcripts, word by word transcripts made of this meeting. And we're having a video taken which will be a forever video of the experience you have here tonight. And finally, as facilitators, we'll be taking notes of the key findings and also uh, measuring your response to what other speakers are saying. So, Charnel. So after this uh, session here and after all the listening sessions, the um, Key findings will be provided to the city council. There will also be a, a random survey that's sent out um, and uh, mailed to individuals to fill out, but it is also available on the website. So if you are interested in filling out the survey, please do so. If you do not give comments tonight, you still have the opportunity to do so. Each meeting has its own email on the me meeting information listing located at Speak Up VA website. Also, you can leave a voicemail on the project website or call 855-925-2801. If you have an issue that is different from tonight's topic, you can email jtorres at vagov.com. Report from the legal team. There will be a report from a legal team who are researching legal options that will be given to the city council. The consideration by the council will be made later this summer based upon all the input that they are hearing from you at these sessions and advice of legal counsel. I will have to say that Virginia Beach is awesome. This is probably one of the most comprehensive uh, things that I've seen when it comes to community engagement and decision making. And it's truly, I think, a model in my personal opinion. Um, now, how we are going to spend our time tonight is all about you. It's about your input, what's on your mind about the election process. Um, we cannot answer any questions, but if you have questions, please state what the question is. Please note it. It's happened in the past, the other two sessions, and that will be part of the tra official transcript, and um, those are questions that will be considered by your council members. So 
first, I think we're going to turn now to our video, which will give us a background of how we got here today. Thank you. Prior to 2022, our local election system remained mostly unchanged since 1967. The city charter defined our local election system as having 11 members. Four were chosen at large with no residency requirement, including the mayor, and seven more were elected at large, but had to reside within one of the former districts. The charter also stated that school board members would be elected in the same manner as their city council counterparts. In November 2017, a lawsuit was filed against the city. The suit alleged that the at-large system violated the Federal Voting Rights Act by diluting the voting power of minorities. Specifically, the plaintiffs contended that the former voting system diluted the voting strength of a coalition of Black, Hispanic, and Asian minority groups. The city defended the lawsuit, contending that no single minority group was large and compact enough to constitute a majority within a single voting district. The city also asserted that it was not reasonable to combine black voters with Asian and Hispanic voters since Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act did not authorize combining minority groups and that the three minority groups specifically mentioned do not vote cohesively as one group. While the lawsuit was pending, the Virginia General Assembly considered and adopted legislation that would require changes to the election system, regardless of the outcome of the case. House Bill 2198 made it so that localities with district or ward-based residency requirements for members of a governing body must elect its members by the qualified members of that district or ward, and not by the locality at large. Further, House Bill 1890 and Senate Bill 1395, known as the Virginia Voting Rights Act, clarified that any at-large method of election shall not be imposed by the governing body in a manner that impairs the ability of a protected class to elect candidates of its choice or its ability to influence an election. Both pieces of legislation also apply to school boards. In March of 2021, the district court said that the city's voting system violated Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. The court concluded that the coalition claims were legally permissible and that the minority groups specifically mentioned in the case were politically cohesive. The court prohibited the city from using the former system in any future elections. Following the March 2021 ruling of the district court, a special master created new election district maps for the city using data from the 2020 census, ensuring they were equally populated. They were drawn in a manner that in the court's view would allow a sufficient majority of minority populations to facilitate the election of minority groups' candidates of choice, including the creation of three minority opportunity districts. Under the new 10-1 system, 10 city council members and 10 school board members are elected from each of the districts. Only the mayor continues to be elected at large and can reside anywhere in the city. The city appealed the district court's decision to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit. In July of 2022, a three-judge panel ruled that the lower court erred in its decision and vacated the district court's decisions and remedy. This decision left the city free to consider options other than the 10-1 system in future elections. However, it was too late to effectively implement a new system in time for the November 2022 election cycle. In November of 2022, residents went to the polls and cast their votes for the city council and school board candidates of their choice using the 10-1 system that had been ordered by the district court. 161,753 ballots were cast, and the outcome was the election of the city's most diverse slate of representatives. Since the court order that implemented the 10-1 system is no longer in effect, the former system of electing local representatives is still on the books in the city charter, it became apparent that city council would need to formally adopt a new method in time for the 2024 elections. In order to ensure that residents had a say in the direction that city council opts to pursue, they passed a resolution in December of 2022 to begin a community engagement campaign to educate and inform residents on what legally viable options are available for the city. 
Following the community engagement period, Virginia Beach residents will be asked to participate in a survey in April. A random sampling of residents will receive a survey in the mail. However, an online version will be available to all residents, with results shared with council and the community this summer. In conclusion, a decision on our election system must be made by City Council in time for the 2024 election. Thank you for joining us today. This is your opportunity to provide input on city policy development and decision making. So that's uh, quite a video about quite a journey that the city of Virginia Beach has been on. Uh, now we're going to start the input um, part of the meeting, which is obviously the most important. Let me go over a few uh, uh, items that will help be helpful to our speakers. The first is we're going to have one speaker at a time. The mic that you will come up to is right there in the center aisle. Uh, two names will be called so that one person can cue that so there's not a pause between the two speakers. Um, when you're done, return to your seat unless the reason why you came was to give input and you want to leave and you're, you're free to leave as well. Um, please, please, no sound effects when people are speaking. That's very distracting and it can be intimidating to others. But there is one exception as far as feedback and this worked really well at our first session. Um, if you like what the speaker is saying, and you want to show your support, if you will just raise your hand, I'm going to count those hands as I'm taking my notes so I can indicate that that was a very popular comment. Uh, and even if you're the only one to raise your hand, I'll, I'll make sure I capture that. And so, Charnel, let's go. Yes. All right. One other thing is that when you um, have about 15 seconds uh, left, you will you will be notified by Nancy. <laughs> so um, we can begin our next first uh, speaker, please. Good evening. Good evening. Our first speaker is Charles Wilson. After Charles Wilson is Melissa Lukeson. Well, I didn't expect to be first. Oh, there you go. But that's okay. <laughs> For, thank you, and thank you for this opportunity to offer comments from the citizenry. I have just a couple of uh, points to make. First, I am very supportive of the current system, the 10-1, that we've recently gone to uh, for a couple of reasons. One, from the perspective of citizens. When we have this system, we as citizens can laser focus on one campaign and really uh, drive our energies toward that uh, in electing our officials. But then from the candidate standpoint, this opens up the door for more possible prospective candidates to enter a campaign. And that is candidates who are not necessarily well healed. If you're having to focus on citizens in only one district, you may even be able to knock on that many doors and raise potentially less money to become elected as opposed to if you have to cover the whole city. That's going to be costly. I am very concerned about the future and young people wanting to enter politics and young people who might not have a lot of money initially. If we were to go back to the old system, you're cutting out or potentially preventing candidates, prospective candidates, who simply will not have access. And then the last point I will make, and I think this was obvious in the last election, we certainly have a very representative city council who went into place in January, unlike any I have seen in my 32 years of being a resident of Virginia Beach. Last quick comment, and only because that video was run. Interesting video that skipped over the 1990s, when in 1994, we voted on this as citizens. I was a new citizen of Virginia Beach, and we voted for what is now the 10-1. That was undermined within two years up in Richmond. I just wanted that on the record. That is a big gap in that history and timeline. But thank you very much. Thank you. 
Our next speaker is Melissa Lukeson. After Melissa Lukeson is Susan Potter. At the first session on Saturday, I spoke of the history of city council subverting the will of the voters 30 years ago to help explain how we were still voting in a citywide at large system under, uh, until just last year. 28,000 citizens signed a petition in 1994 and forced city council to put a referendum on the ballot at the end or to end the at-large system and the disenfranchisement of minority voters. It passed by a clear majority of 52.7%, but local and state politicians tricked the voters with an ambiguously worded follow-up referendum in 1996, which kept an all-at-large system in place until 2022, until some brave women of color stepped up and filed a lawsuit against the city. You are about to see a pattern of behavior from our elected officials. In more recent history, Mayor Bobby Dyer rallied to waste over $10 million of our tax dollars to appeal the court's decision on our previous voting system that helped enable 57 years worth of institutionalized racism in this city. And just this last December, he brought forth a resolution for this public engagement after saying he would wait until a new council was seated. He rushed, and it's all on record, folks, to get this in front of the council before the new members were seated. He was worried he wouldn't get the votes he needed from the council you elected under 10-1. At the February 7, 2023 City Council meeting, council voted to spend $349,958 to enter into a contract with UVA's Weldon Cooper Center to conduct these hearings and survey citizens. We're a city of approximately 45,000 people. They will sample about 4,500 citizens and only expect a return rate of 25%, which equals approximately 1,000 people. While I appreciate public input on important issues, spending this kind of money because the status quo was unhappy with the youngest, most diverse council ever in the history of this city is reprehensible. The money spent on this could have gone to a new roof on Betty F. Williams so it stops raining on children's heads while they're in school on a rainy day. I do not believe that some members of council are operating in good faith. Many of our elected officials are beholden to, to developers like Bruce Thompson and the McCleskies. That excuse that people are upset that they didn't get to vote this election because their district was not up for re-election is a smoke and mirrors game that I will not play. The city's failure to promote robust voter education on the 10-1 system is not an excuse for the city to say that voters are upset or the 10-1 system doesn't work. The reason politicians want some at-large seats is so they can galvanize a specific base of voters to elect the same cronies that have been working for oceanfront developers and special interests. The councilman that currently represents District 1, where we are convened right now, does not support the 10-1 system based on his votes. So if you are a strong proponent of 10-1 and you live in this District 1, please be sure to let Rocky Holcomb know how you feel. I strongly support the 10-1 system. Okay, thank you. Our next speaker next. is Susan Potter. After Susan Potter is Melissa Peck. Um, thank you. Um, I am a resident of Larkspur, right up there. Um, I'm a resident of Larkspur and I've lived here for 31 years and that's my giant map. Um, and I support the 10-1 system, that's fine. Thank you. Um, I support the 10-1 system. I think we can improve this map somewhat. And I have three suggestions that will make it better. First of all, we're in Fairfield elementary school. The Fairfield neighborhood is split along Lord Dunmore. Lord Dunmore is an internal road. There is a road that is a block away, sometimes two blocks away, called Kemsill Road, and that is a main road. And there's really no reason to split this neighborhood between districts one and three when it should all be in district one. You can do that without affecting the racial balance or, or the minority opportunity districts. Um, four, seven, and 10. So that's my first suggestion. My second suggestion I mentioned earlier is precinct 105 on that map. If you look at the western Bayside District where we were a few days ago, the western branch of the Lynn Haven River intersects district nine and eight. There is a, there is a, a precinct 105 that jumps that large body of water it's precinct 105, and the reason it jumps that large body of water is that the special master was trying to include incumbents who at that time were the late Lewis Jones and uh, John Moss. And it doesn't need to jump that body of water. You can straighten out that line, and nobody has to get in a boat and go over <laughs> to knock on doors. So that would be a common sense suggestion. The third one, which is a bit more optional because I don't think it relates to the purpose of this 10-1, but it's dear to me, is Larkspur neighborhood. 
um, and adjacent areas. Our Independence Boulevard also is a gigantic main road. We are to the west of that in precincts 24 and 27. We are in Kempsville. Our schools are named Kempsville, our kids go to the Kempsville High School and, and Kempsville Meadows Elementary School and we have been put across this giant road and jumping past the giant park of Mount Trashmore in District 3. There's no reason for that. We should be in Kempsville, we should be in District 1. You can make that slight change without changing any of the minority opportunity districts 4, 7, and 10. Um, so I, that would be my third suggestion. I have a bump. Am I out? Um, 15 seconds. Bonus suggestion. We need a vote early voting site in Kempsville, and I hope Mr. Colcom will pay attention to that and make it happen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Again, people's hands that are going up is just they're expressing their agreement uh, so we can get a sense instead of people clapping. Next, next speaker. Our next speaker yes. is Melissa Peck. After Melissa Peck is Allison Daly. Hi there, I am here to speak in support of the 10-1 district voting system. At-large voting systems violate section two of the Voting Rights Act. This section outlaws the use of election systems that make a racial group's votes less effective than those of other groups. Additionally, the former voting system we had in Virginia Beach prior to last year's local elections, sorry, <coughs> allowed special interests far too much power over who we were able to elect. In order to run citywide, candidates often needed to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars. This often insurmountable barrier to entry resulted in candidates that relied on wealthy donors and special interest organizations to raise the campaign funds needed to win. Last year, the new 10-1 district voting system, we saw a greater variety of local candidates with far fewer ties to special interests and candidates more willing to be directly accountable to the people living in their district. The 10-1 voting system helps ensure that our elections are fair and that all voters have an equal opportunity to elect candidates of their choice. It is my hope that City Council makes the decisions in the best interest of the residents of Virginia Beach and that they maintain the 10-1 district voting system. Thank you. Our next speaker is Allison Daly. After Allison Daly will be Bob Mandigo. I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. As a native of Tidewater and a resident of Kempsville for 20 years, the 10-1 system seems to work just fine. It is better representative of our districts <clears throat> with the council members who are a part of and participate in um, activities within the neighborhoods, within the districts, um, <clears throat> and they represent us better if they know who we are and we know who they are. So I think it's better like that. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Bob Mandigo. Following Mr. Mandigo will be it's, David Phillips. It's Mandigo. Apologies. The current election system, having one at-large council seat, the mayor, and 10 district seats puts our city at high risk for council making decisions that could result in adverse long-term consequences, <clears throat> both fiscally and for livability. I believe we need at least four at-large seats and prefer five to ensure the majority of city council remains focused on the entire city. I believe we need council members who will focus on results that benefit the entire city, not just the district each represents. I expect there will be disagreement over issues and items among council members. I expect alliances to form and reform on the many <clears throat> and various issues and items. Six council members constitute a majority, which is sufficient to pass most issues. On issues requiring a supermajority, it takes nine of the 11 council members. In theory, council members under the district system are accountable only to their district's voters, while they set policies and ordinance that govern the entire city. We have only one council member who represents the city's rural area and 10 others which represent the rest of the city. Every council member should understand what has and will make Virginia Beach a great place to live, work, and play, and to support the viability of the entire city when those decisions may have an adverse effect on their own district. We have four major industries, military, tourism, agriculture, and construction. The City Council needs to establish and maintain a long-range vision, adopt ordinance, and make planning and budget decisions that reflect that vision to ensure our future viability and livability. 
We almost lost Naval Air Station Oceana in the Department of Defense's base realignment <coughs> and closure process in 2005 because we had infilled to the extent that many of our residents, visitors, and workers could die in a military aircraft cr crash. We were lucky. The Navy decided to stay. The City Council reviewed zoning and planning criteria, upcoming projects, bought land and easements to reduce the potential number of people in the crash and danger zones. We have experienced major flooding in the south side of the city, <clears throat> most recently up to Windsor Woods since 2010 because council members didn't realize how susceptible those areas were to flooding because of a poor drainage, the poor drainage, in and into the southern part of the city. In the early 2000s, the city council rezoned farmland and authorized several housing developments south of the green and blue lines. After houses and streets were built, we experienced flooding in those developments and flooding north of them because of the poorly planned and inadequate drainage. Here you have 15 seconds to wrap up. In the last 20 years, in the last 20 years, my district, Kempsville, has experienced much infill and redevelopment with apartments and multifamily housing, which has added to the traffic congestion and school demand. It took only 18 years to plan, improve, and reconstruct the Kempsville, Princess Anne, and Witch Duck intersection. Thank you. Our next speaker is David Phillips. Following David Phillips will be Donna Sandloop. Okay. So, okay, Mr. Phillips is not speaking, so. Okay. Then next. our next speaker is Donna Sandloop, and I apologize. No, okay. So who's next? <laughs> Thank you for being here. That who's after Mr. Phillips? Uh, Miss. Yeah, Donna Sandler. Donna is not speaking. Okay. Uh, in that case, our next speaker. I apologize. Uh, right. Michael Hashimi. Welcome. Okay. I'll have to keep it. Try to keep it uh, short, like some of the others just now. Um, so going over this uh, paper, you know, it says that the changes to state laws in 2021 was the reason why the appellate court turned down the, the original decision by the district court. So in essence, what we're saying is that we're not arguing over if there should be at large, because clearly the new laws in our state government that state delegates pass, we should respect as city government officials and the people. So I think what we're really going over is these like minor details that we can work on the map that previous speakers spoke about. But I think it's, you know, like someone else said, we're kind of wasting some taxpayer dollars here. I appreciate the, uh, the, you know, the wherewithal of getting everyone's, um, you know, opinion on everything. But I think it's clear in the laws that are passed that we should keep you know, representation this way, no at large should be discussed really. I mean, if you look at this, so I just want to express my support for the 10 to one. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Our next speaker is Andrew Porter. Following Andrew Porter is Jan Taylor. Good evening, good evening. Um, since 1984, I've lived in Pembroke. I've lived in Red Mill area, and now I live in Fairfield. And all three times I have voted for many councilmen and many and mayors. And November 22, under the 10-1 system, was the first time I felt like uh, whatever representative I was voting for represented where I lived at that particular time. Because <clears throat> at other times, you were lucky if you got somebody that drove through your neighborhood. Uh, I know. Um, <clears throat> now, I will tell you that the 10-1 system wasn't publicized as well as it could have for the November 2022 election. I was an election worker uh, at one of, the, one of the precincts here in Kemsville, and a lot of people, when they, brought their, when they got their ballot, they'd ask, and they'd go, well, how come all these councilmen and school board members aren't on there? And we would explain to them the 10-1 system, and I will say that Far and away, the, the comments were very positive from the voters that we talked to that day that the 10-1 system is, is good. Thank you. Welcome. 
Thank you. Good afternoon, Jan Taylor. I just wanted to add my uh, my opinion on the 10-1 system. I am super. I am totally in favor of the 10-1 system. Um, I have been here since 1994 and have voted in every election there is. I voted for school board, city council, just voted. But this particular time, voting time, has been an experience. We've had an opportunity to meet people. We have an opportunity to go grassroots and get to know people. And I think that this is something that will benefit the city. Our mayor is always saying on the diocese that Virginia Beach is a great place to live. I think he needs to let it be a great place to live for everyone and let us be great and keep this 10-1 system. Thank you. Thank you. There are no additional speakers signed. Right. Okay. Oh. Well, please, if you can, I'm sorry? Yeah, you can go to the mic if you're, yeah, because we're done, so yes. My name is Fred Ford, F-O-A-R-D as in board. Um, I'm relatively new to the area. I live in College Park um, and have been in Virginia Beach since the end of 2013. Um, so that gives me an interesting perspective because I've lived in other places where we have representative uh, voting and then come to here where we it's clearly we don't have it or at least we didn't have it until this past election. I uh, represent uh, the Virginia Beach African American Political Action Council even though it has the word PAC in it it's not a political action uh, group in the sense of uh, partisan politics or raising funds. As um, Councilman Holcomb knows, um, our process is that we uh, send out questionnaires to uh, all of the candidates, inviting them to participate in uh, discussion of issues of concern to our community. And if they respond, we invite them for personal interviews. And as he can attest, those interviews are pretty uh, in-depth uh, and pretty straightforward. And from that perspective, and I've been involved in this process f with uh, APAC for uh, at least seven elections, uh, I can tell you that up until this past election, um, we, we had uh, clearly uh, uh, people coming through who are oftentimes the same people, the same sort of old boy network uh, and the same vested interests. And this time, we had a lot of fresh faces, like I think uh, Melissa Peck, who spoke. I think she was one of the people that was a, a new fresh face. Uh, three of the um, people, new people, uh, uh, of the four that were elected to council uh, were, were new people. Um, and so that was refreshing. And I can tell you from having put them through the process that they had not only interests of their respective districts at heart, but in contrast to what a previous speaker said, um, they also had interests and could speak to issues uh, citywide. Uh, issues such as the condition of our uh, schools, um, environmental issues, uh, uh, issue of lack of adequate low-income housing, um, lack of minority and female and veteran participation in city contracts and things like that. Um, yeah, so, um, obviously, I'm in favor of retaining the system. The last thing I want to mention is that uh, here in Kempsville, uh, under the old system, uh, uh, Dr. Amelia Hammond was not reelected from here, uh, but on the new system, she she was able to run successfully. So um, that's a positive. Thank you. Does anyone else like to speak? Yes, please come up. And just give your name and what's on your mind. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Ella ahead. Dunbar. Um, I'm here to speak in favor of the 10-1 system because our representatives should be accountable to me and my neighbors and not to the special interests or developers down at the oceanfront. 
I know sometimes when I'm looking at the background of the various candidates who are running, a lot of times they're with this real estate company or with this whatever, but all of their ties seem to be to special interests. And I would like for my representative that I can look them in the face and tell them what I need. I've spoken before city council before when we had a developer want to do something right beside us. My development had 100 homes in it. And I show up at city council with signatures from 50 of those people in opposition to the development. And I don't even know that my representative voted with what I wanted to, what we all wanted to do. Um, a 731 system can really uh, overturn, overturn the will of the majority of the voters. And we should not be about the business of overturning the will of the voters. Elections are what elections are supposed to be, one person, one vote. We are not children, and we do not, we're not people who don't know our own minds. So if we vote to do something, we don't need some supermajority over somewhere else that can then come and say, well, they don't really know what they're doing. This is what's best for Virginia Beach. I'm a grown woman, and everybody in this room, I believe, are adults. And so when we vote, our votes should count. Thank you. Thank you. And are there, yes, please. Hi, my name is Walter Camp. Um, I am past president of the Bellamy Woods Civic League. Spent 10 years on that board. I've been appointed to a number of citywide boards and commissions, work on nonprofits that are citywide, like the Parks and Rec Foundation. And I come from that perspective. There have been a tremendous number of merits in the statements made today that I really agree with. And they're on both sides of these issues. I think it's incredibly important that local interests be represented and a pure at-large system wouldn't do that. We've got a focus that we've never had. On the other hand, we also have almost a hyper-local focus on some issues, that there's one of these resources in a district and not one over there, and maybe that needs to be addressed, but maybe it's not where these arbitrary lines were drawn this time that makes sense for those resources. Maybe those resources need to be closer to where the most people are, or where that issue is, or some other reason for spreading them out around the city, not just where these lines are. I certainly agree that the little bumps and curves meant to accommodate incumbents or to split neighborhoods, that needs to be fixed. That's not the right way to represent folks. I was one of those folks who used to vote for 11 people in every election, just like some of these other folks who voted year after year, and finding out that I could only vote for two people the 2.7 million votes disappeared. That's nine seats times 300,000 voters. And we didn't have a say-so in that. That made me angry. Maybe the change is right, but how we got there, that wasn't right. And I'm glad we have a voice in whatever's next, if it's keeping this or changing it or tinkering with it. I would like to put one thought forward that I haven't heard here. Norfolk has contended with this and they adopted a system that's more of a hybrid, where they have folks who represent a local district, but then they also have what's called a super ward. It's not at large, it's a part of the city that's bigger than just one district. Maybe it's a combination of three districts near each other, and there's somebody who has to live in that area and comes out of that area to council. And I like that idea. From the roles that I've had, I see a lot of council members teaming up now and two of them have to deal with historic Kentsville, two of them at Town Center, two of them on this and that, which tells me issues are crossing these tiny little boundaries that that's hard on those folks. They're elected and they're running around to how many meetings out there. I think it's exciting, the new people that we have on council, who they represent, where they're from, what they're about, but I think a hybrid system with some super wards would probably be a cleaner representation of our citywide issues while retaining the strengths of the districts. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else would like to speak? You can, if you can go to the mic and ask your question. I can't answer any questions, but we can make it part of the record so that 
we can get you an answer. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rod James, Hi. and I've been here since 81. And I thought tonight's meeting was going to be more about uh, the vending machines, paper only, six months to, to vote, a month to count the votes, and all that stuff. Will there be any input like this for that system? Well, say, well, say what's on your mind, because this is, this is broad. This is about the electoral process. So you please, this is appropriate time if there's something on your mind. Well, I'm still, I haven't had anybody change my mind that most of the elections in the country, and I'm not sure we're uh, excluded, that the machines are in question. Um, I agree with Trump that we need to be back to paper, back to one day, but and keep the absentee open. Uh, as people are out of town, I understand that. I used to be a truck driver. So keep that system open, you know, maybe a month or six weeks. And I think um, a couple places other than just one for any um, pre-voting for handicapped people would be good. Maybe a week ahead of time, running through Prince's Hand is fine. You know, I know it's crowded, everybody going in one day, but We've got to do something to stop all this crooked election stuff that's taking place. Okay? Thank you. All Thanks right. Thank comments. you. Thank you. Yes. Anybody? Yes. You can come speak. Yes. So just give us your name, and it's three minutes. Okay. Go Good afternoon. My name is Tracy Murray, last name M U R R A Y, and I am here in support of the 10 1 system. Um, I've been here my whole life. I'm a native, which is sometimes um, surprising to some people because we have very transit being military. Um, but I've heard people say qualified people who wanted to run for office, and the thing they talked about was the fact of having enough money because they think it costs a lot of money, and when that should not be their priority. The fact that they want to support the citizens here in Virginia Beach should be what is the priority. If they think they have something to bring to the table to help all of us, that should be what they're concerned with. So I am in support of the 10-1 system. I also say we didn't do a great job in November letting people know about the 10-1 system, but once they were explained and told about the 10-1 system, they were in support of the 10-1 system. And last but not least, I would just like for you guys to respond to some of the emails over the years that you've gotten talking about the early voting sites. They need to be expanded. You need to look at them. So other than that, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, my name is Jamal Gunn. <clears throat> I'm going to try to keep this short, but I do have to give some background. I was, I'm not, I was not born here, but I have lived in this area, at least five miles from this area, for 36 of my 42 years. I used to ride my bikes through this neighborhood. I used to play basketball right over there. Up until last year, I would drive through this neighborhood to go to work. So I'm very familiar with this area, and this is home for me. Um, but I do have to say this, I also have a bit of a unique perspective because, and I don't want to, don't mean to get political, but um, I have worked in politics and I have worked with a number of candidates who have run for elected office, particularly for city council. And it's different when you hear somebody say special interests and not be able to um, properly define it, but I know that the candidates I have worked for have all been routinely overmatched by money that is coming from way out of the area, from people who are being supported by people who have no interest in this area, in this district, in this school whatsoever. And that makes it impossible for those candidates to be able to compete. It makes, and, and those candidates who are being supported, they do not come here. They do not knock on these doors. They do not know our neighbors. And we can't have these people keep coming around. I mean, I love them. They're doing a good, they, some of them do good work, but at the same time, they don't know these neighborhoods. They don't know our neighbors. We can't con have that continue to happen. I do also want to say this, though. Um, our electoral system and what we have been doing has been working. Um, I didn't see any issues. I did see some issues back in 2012 when I'm over at College Park and there's a line until 2 o'clock in the morning. Other than that, 
our electoral system has been functioning really well, and I'm thankful for that. Thank you. Is anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I'm Julie Fisher with the C. I came late. I missed your spiel because I'm working two jobs. And I'm tired, so I'm brain dead. Understand. But I'm going to come towards you. Yeah, we're just going to do that microphone. Thank you. Thank sorry you. about that. And I've shrunk, too. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're all shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just you wait. I've lived here since 72. Yes. So I've been around the block. And every time I, I voted, routinely, but I never understood why I was voting for people outside of my area, and I therefore didn't, okay? I just didn't vote for them because I didn't know why. why what business do I have with them? One person here said uh, it was for the overall good of the beach, not your neighborhood particularly, and I understand that, but <sighs> you said you couldn't answer questions. Can you tell me in three seconds what you said quickly before I got here? I mean, I want to figure out what are we doing now. Right, and I will, I will, I will repeat it. You don't um, have to end. go through your whole spiel. No, I'm just trying no, to get I a will. feel for what I missed. Absolutely, and I will do it at the end of this of this comment section. I will cool. give a big summary of what I said at the beginning. Cool. Yes. Um, I still think I want to be represented by somebody who knows my neighborhood, who knows me. And yes, they may not care what we have going on at the oceanfront. And perhaps they should because that brings in a lot of money. But I still want them to represent me first and then to represent the city as a whole. Now, if I understood what I read quickly there, there are four at, loud, at large and seven districts. Is that what we have today? Or is that what we had? Uh, where are we? Used to. What do we have now? Ten districts and one at large? Yeah. Oh, we need more than that, don't we? <laughs> it's all right. I mean, now I'm talking mixed messages here, but that's why I'm confused. I mean, one is not enough, but I don't want it to be a whole lot. How in the dickens are you going to pull that off? <laughs> that's all. Thank you so much. Does anyone else have... Um, would like to speak? All right. I, <laughs> you can, if there's another question you'd like to pose that will be part of the transcript, absolutely. Again, my name is Fred Ford. Um, what, if I look at the literature that's been put out, um, it's sort of indefinite. It takes us up through um, the city council getting the report from the school, and then, but it doesn't say when, and it doesn't say when the city council will make a decision. But if the decision is made to make a change from the 10 1, um, as I understand it, it would have to still go. Uh, to be approved by the Virginia uh, Attorney General and or by the General Assembly and possibly end up in court again. Is that correct? And I know you can't answer that. I, but I can't, but I'm sure the city will, there is information about the process and I will review again sort of the next steps. Right. So Absolutely. Ultimately, um, the question is, will things happen in time to, if, assuming there's a change, to affect the next election cycle? Thank you. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I think we still have a little little time. What I would really like to see uh, the city address is how to educate the voters because there's so much confusion and misinformation. So many people, 
don't even look at one news broadcast during the week, don't even read the newspaper, and then somebody over here says something, and Facebook says something, and somebody else says something, and so folks are really confused or, you know, I worked the election, the polls this past election, and people showed up, and they were really surprised when they didn't have but one thing to vote for, not realizing that their city council person was still in place, not up for re-election. So I think a lot of things, a lot of problems are misinformation, some of it deliberate, and it just leaves people kind of confused about what's going on. So we would hope that people will be educated when they come to the polls. But a lot of people show up and they think, well, I'm going to vote this, this slate of whoever, the way we used to do in the previous system, where you voted for everybody. And so they line up with this whole particular group. And sometimes we're, we end up in, I think, people are voting culture wars and not policy that affects me and my neighborhood. And that is, and so for that reason, I think we really need to educate the voters about exactly what is going on so there's no confusion. Elections are not a surprise. We know we're having them every four years or every two years in the off election. And so I think we have time to figure out who's running, what's going on, but I think it's incumbent upon every voter to educate themselves, but as far as the voting system goes, the city really needs to make sure that everybody understands exactly what's going on. Because I think some folks who are think, feeling that they're disenfranchised because they can't vote for this one, this one, this one, and this one, I mean, really, we're talking about one person, one vote. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? All right. Yes, sir. Well, I just wanted to make a statement based on what she says. It's very important that um, we all know who and what to vote for and how to vote. And she's right, because nobody knows nothing. But I just wanted to mention, she was on point, because nobody knows nothing. So we, the voters, have the right to know what and who to vote for. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, may I have, we have her, your name so for the transcript. Oh, me? Yes, sir. I apologize. Um, That's right. I am a former candidate of District 4 City Council, and my name is Mike Marcus, Mike Marcellus Mitchell. Okay, thank you so thank much. You. Yes. Okay, I'm coming before you again because I'm tagging And just on. repeat your name again. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Tracy right. Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y. Right. I spoke a little earlier. And I'm tagging on to these two people's uh, comments in regards to the city doing a much better job of educating its citizens about the elections process. And when we do it, my comment is that we make sure that we just don't do everything electronically and on the computer because we have a lot of people who are not using the computer and it's not a bad thing that they're not using the computer. We have shown now that we can have these town hall meetings and therefore we can get the community to come out and be face to face and ask their questions and if they have to take questions back and bring them back, that's acceptable. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Is there anyone else? All right, and then we'll Yes. Um, my name is David Phillips, and I was yes. not going to speak earlier, but sitting here listening to all these comments and everything, I realized how uninformed I was about it. And I would just like to say, if you could run this video that you showed us on the city channels, they stream 24 hours a day, and that, that little video explaining how we got to this would be very informative because like me and my wife and son, 
we don't we didn't know anything all we knew was that we have a new system to vote and we were only going to get to vote for two people and we didn't like that we wanted to vote for the people on this the city council we wanted to vote for the people on the school board and we weren't able to do that we could only vote for two people thank you thank you yes ma'am good evening judith jeffrey college park area i didn't make any notes and this is quite spontaneous but it, i am definitely definitely for the 10-1 system i've heard about this since i moved here uh, about 30 years ago from up north and it's time a uh, few things that i have to say it appears to me that virginia beach is acting as though um they're spoiled brat. I didn't get what I want, so I'm gonna take everything back. I don't have a reverse. And I think from what I'm hearing today, many people here don't have a reverse or you want to just be fair. It's not good. It's not a good idea to, um, when people have voted, you've taken the time, you studied your candidates, and you want to exercise your rights. So, um, I think Virginia Beach got caught up in the de facto taking system. And if some of you know, may know that de facto is a system or something that is in place, it's practiced, it may not be right, but it can be beneficial to certain people while ignoring others. So let's not get caught up in a de facto situation, Virginia Beach City. It's a great city, I like it. You get a parking space wherever you go. <laughs> nice and sunny and everything to clean the streets and so forth okay so um, I just wanted to say that uh, we don't want to be caught up in going backwards when everyone sh should be trying to go forward children adults and like-minded people I'm very impressed with um, the thoughts that have come through this evening so let's do that and as Rodney King said can't we all just get along Thank you. Does anyone else like to say anything? All right. Well, and I will, so as I said, I will summarize uh, somewhat what I said earlier. Basically, this is our, an opportunity to hear from residents of Virginia Beach. There were a total of 12 sessions. This is the third. Um, this was an opportunity for everyone to provide input on the um, election system. I did discuss, um, and I'll, I'll say again, what's going to happen is there, there will be a report of our findings um, from these sessions. There is a survey that is a random survey that is sent out. If you don't get one, it's okay because you can also go online and fill out the survey as well. And please spread the word that that is available. Um, there will be, as well as council is going to provide some legal options to city council to consider on, along with and in conjunction with what they are hearing um, from you. Uh, the City Council is expected to take action by the summertime or in time for the 2024 election, as was mentioned in the video. So I thank you all. We thank you all, Jane and I both, for, for you all being here. Thank you. Thank you.